Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trauma Plicity Podcast with your host, Dr. Amanda Hellman, author, breakthrough coach, and speaker. Trauma Plicity is trauma plus implicity. And you might think, hmm, how do they go together? Well, we take simple steps towards healing trauma. And so when we think simply, our brain actually can shift and, not, and really know that it's okay to start moving ahead rather than thinking about the complex process that often trauma is. And so we've had amazing guests, just like Dr. Ashley today on sharing how they navigated through trauma, sharing tips, and then offering a word of encouragement for all of you in your journey. Thank you all for tuning in this week. Tonight's guest, as I mentioned, is Dr. Ashley Funk, and she is the owner and founder of Paradise Psychology in Fort Worth, Texas. Dr. Ashley is a licensed psychologist and specializes in the treatment of anxiety disorders and helpful, helping caregivers manage their child's unwanted behaviors. She is also passionate about helping her clients improve their relationships through open, effective communication and healthy boundaries. Dr. Ashley Funk is the survivor of a psychologically abusive marriage. She hopes that sharing her story today will help to just demystify the mental health profession and normalize the concept of healing from trauma. Dr. Ashley, it is so wonderful to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so, as I mentioned, I'll, we'll, we'll love to hear part of your trauma story. Yeah. So um, at the beginning of my graduate school career, I met my Mm ex-husband. And so, you know, obviously graduate school, super stressful, a lot going on, a lot of wearing different hats. um, And I guess at the time I didn't really realize what was happening to me, Um, you know, slowly kind of getting groomed, if you will, isolated from my support system, um, you know, People were kind of warning me. I even remember having one of my classmates say, hey, you know, I think this guy is not good for you. You shouldn't date him. Um, But just being cut off from everybody, that was a support. And it was a lot of what's called love bombing at the first. So this individual was really mirroring everything and like, oh, we're so much alike. And I can't believe we all like the same things and agreeing with me on everything. And I was like, wow, I found my perfect match. And then as the relationship progressed and we moved in together and we got engaged, it was like, I was seeing this completely different person. Mm. So there was a lot of psychological abuse, you know, like name calling, moving the goalposts. So like, if, you know, he'd say, I really want this. And I'd kind of meet that standard. And then he'd be like, oh, well, that's not good enough. Mm. So, you know, and aside from like having these like really major fights that were like toe to toe, it was constantly feeling like I was walking on eggshells and never knew what I was walking into after classes. And there was a bit of financial abuse too, where even though I was in graduate school and, you know, broke, <laughs> I was responsible for paying all the bills, handling all the finances, even though he had a job, mm-hmm. everything kind of rested on me. And so the, you know, years of that, we were together seven years, married for three of those, and it kind of culminated in me discovering a lot of infidelity Mm. and then an incident of actually like physical violence. And that that was a kind of the moment where I was like, all right, can't do this anymore. You know, I I kind of made him a promise the first time I found out he cheated on me. I was like, do it again. I'm out. Mm -hmm. I made good on that promise when I found out it was a second affair and I filed for divorce and he was gone. Mm. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Dr. Ashley, and yeah. I know uh, obviously that it, um, when you're in college, like there were some signs, but again, the love bombing happened, the quick love stuff. So it really blinded you. And then all the different things happened, even though other friends had shared concerns, it was, you were really far into that. And when, after you filed for divorce, what shifted in you to get to you where you are now? I did a lot of self-education and, you know, being a mental health professional, I was like, all right, I need to seek another mental health professional because when you're a mental health professional, it's really easy to sit there and say to other people and see their situation, you know, when you're emotionally detached and say, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, like this, this, and this, 
But when you're emotionally involved, it's very different. Mm -hmm. And you don't see things as clearly as maybe you should, um, or as you might see it if your patient were to come with you and say the same things you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so I saw someone who specialized in narcissistic abuse recovery, Mm -hmm. and that helped me see a lot of things. I, you know, and I got a lot of books. I read um, a book by Jackson McKenzie called Psychopath Free, Mm -hmm. and that gave me a lot of the labels of what had been happening to me. Um, and I also read a book by Shannon Thomas called Healing from Hidden Abuse. Okay. That was also very helpful. And I also did group therapy, not just individual therapy, which was really helpful for me because it let me see people at different stages of healing. So I could Mm -hmm. say, oh, I've been there or here's where I'm at. And this is what I have to look forward to. But it also is that, you know, message we all need to hear of you're not alone. You know, other people are kind of experiencing similar things as you are. And we were able to kind of talk with each other and give each other encouragement and support through that process as well. Okay. And that's, that's great that you realized in that pain that you needed additional support from a mentor and a specific therapist that looked at narcissistic um, abuse and really helping you through that. And then also having that support system. And so I know you mentioned some strategies or some things that have helped you. What else was helpful for you during your healing journey as you recovered from that abusive marriage? So one thing that was very helpful for me that I, it was such a small thing, but it was like a really big thing (laughs) was when I had the urge to reach out to my ex because a lot of times we'll look back on these previous relationships and we'll kind of see them through rose colored glasses and think, you know, cause think of it this way. I wouldn't have stayed in a relationship for seven years if there wasn't something good. Cause you know, mm-hmm. that is the abuse cycle. You know, yeah. we have this period of good and then something bad happens and then, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. And you have this period of good stuff. The bad happens and you go through the cycle over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, think of those good times and be like, Oh, was it really that bad? Um, uh, Well, what I did is I got a note card and I wrote down the three worst things that happened in my marriage. Mm. So whether it was like three things he said to me, three things he did. And when I kind of had those moments where I was like, "Mm," and I was feeling kind of, you know, like I might unblock him. I might talk to him. I might reach out to him. I would pull that note card out and Mm. I would read those three things and I'd be like, nope. I'm done. And I would have such a clear head at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was very, very helpful to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing I did is because I had been so socially isolated is I found friends. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways I did that is, and it was scary because I like didn't know anybody where I lived. I was in a completely different state at the time. Mm -hmm. No friends, no family that lived there. Um, I joined an app called Meetup that is for finding friends with similar interests. And I went to a 20s and 30s meetup and I found an amazing group of friends. We hung out at least once a week. And even when I was going through my divorce and like I had my mediation, I was like texting one of them, like, help me, help me, help me, like keep me distracted. Like, Mm -hmm. um, and being able to like have that just social support and like get me out of my own head and be able to find myself again because I used to be so social and outgoing before I was with my ex. It's really good. And the, the index card is really helpful where you said you put down the three worst things to remind you. And, and that makes sense because with that abuse cycle, as you mentioned, it could seem like there's good times and there are not good times. And it could be confusing between, okay, well, there was good. And then there was some bad and it really, really does impact our brain and our, and our thoughts. So that is a, is a really helpful strategy that seemed to help you. So a card just there to remind you, okay, this is why even in this moment where it's confusing, this is why I'm moving forward. And I think that was, that's a really helpful, practical tool that seems to, again, if audience is listening, that may help in those situations where it could be very confusing between good and bad. Um, And then thinking about your social support, I love that you had some different ways because you were in a different place to 
meet up with other people like-minded and that really helped during your divorce. So that's great. Those are some great tips and even some apps like you had the meetup app. Um, so those could be helpful for people. Okay. Thank you. And then thinking, you know, Dr. Ashton, I know obviously you're now in a position to help many people and have that empathy, especially for women who are going through that. When you're, if you think about people who might be listening in, they may be in the beginning of this journey. They may be where you are, where they're in a relationship, had some concerns, but can, you know, just not sure what to do or tuning in perhaps they're in the middle of it where they're, where they're continuing or perhaps where you were, where you started your journey. What is a word or perhaps words of encouragement that you have for these uh, women, mostly there might be men, but women or men that are in this situation? Trust your judgment. Mm -hmm. I think all too often we try to rationalize what's going on or we don't trust ourselves so we kind of have that gut feeling that something is off or something is not quite right or wrong and we are fed an excuse or we're fed some you know something by our partner and we want to believe it so badly that we just go oh yeah like and we kind of push that feeling down and I urge everyone just, if you feel like something isn't right, trust that, like trust your judgment because it is your body and your mind's way of protecting you. That's really powerful. So trust your judgment. And if there is some type of instinct that something is off, take, stop and take that pause and think about it. And even if you've had people in concern, Again, everybody has to make their own choice and everybody might be on a different, have a different perspective, but having friends that care about you and do say at least one concern is important, even if you aren't ready to hear it, but that is important in, in friendships. So thank you for, for sharing those tips, you know, and even if you're not sure, even asking some friends or perhaps even someone else that's non-biased, if you're concerned about talking to friends and family, but somebody outside of your circle and just say, this things are going on, or maybe perhaps, maybe it's not you, you're not sharing about you, but perhaps a, right. Like as if you're mm -hmm. as another person and getting people's perspective to help you if you're not quite sure, perhaps it's muddied because you're in so deep. So thank you so much, Dr. Ashley. I'm sure that's going to be helpful for many people in the audience. So any other thoughts or any other comments that have come up as we as we had this conversation today? Yeah, you know, I think it's important to not be afraid to ask for help and to seek support from any avenue that you feel like you need to. You know, there's always people out there that are available you know, to listen, whether that is a friend that you trust, a professional, you know, clergy, anybody, spiritual guide, whatever it is, you know, there are people out there that are willing to support you, listen to you, and don't be afraid to seek that help. Absolutely. Yes. People are willing to support you as Dr. Ashley just shared with us. And Dr. Ashley, I appreciate your time today. It was great to, to hear your bravery and even you sharing the journey. And you can find Dr. Ashley Funk on Facebook and Instagram at Paradise Psychology uh, PLLC. And I'll be posting that in the podcast as well as on the YouTube. So you can have information. And certainly if you have any questions, if you put any questions down or any comments, I will get those questions to Dr. Ashley. But certainly if this is your area and you're hearing her story and you're like, I really need that support, certainly reach out. She has that expertise and experience to support you. Otherwise, this is our episode of the Trauma Publicity Podcast. All of you out there listening, thank you for tuning in each week to the Trauma Publicity Podcast, where we're looking at simple steps in the journey to help you heal in different areas of trauma and encourage you while you're on this journey. Finally, all most importantly, you are loved, valued, and you matter at all times, no matter what. And so certainly we are here, we care about you, and I hope to hear you and see you next, or see, or you'll be tuning in next week to the YouTube or the podcast. Again, thank you, Dr. Ashley, for your time. It was great to talk with you. 
Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.